Joining us on set is the analyst behind that note, Dan Dolive, senior fintech analyst at Mizuho. We're also joined by Jeffrey's Matthew Taylor, who says concerns about diabetes devices and treatments in particular are overblown. Welcome to both of you. Dan, we'll start with you. What's a toast you really think could be toast from this? Yeah, I, thank you for having me again. Uh, I think it's, um, I think the weight loss drugs are going to make toast lose weight, <laughs> right? And um, we did some work with con in conjunction with our uh, med tech device analyst, Anthony Patron. So we used a lot of sort of very sophisticated, you know, studies about weight loss. And what we found out is that this is going to be like a 25 to $30 billion drag on the U.S. restaurant industry by wow. 2025. There's like 130 million people between obese people in America and type 2 diabetes that could be as much as 130 million people that have that diagnosis. And if only like 15 million of them, which is less than 15 percent, use that, this is like a 25 to 30 billion dollar drag on the U.S. restaurant industry and like a potentially like a mid-single digit drag on volumes for toast because they're 100 percent exposed to restaurants. That, and the shares are down 6 percent today. They're down 22 percent over the past three months. It's incredible to see something potentially have this much impact. Obviously, you don't cover the restaurants, but I mean, this, you we're talking about huge, huge money that is potentially going to be lost as a result of this. Correct. And like people pushing, you know, people are pushing back saying it's only Upper East Side, Upper West Side. Right. You know, people are buying it off. You know, I think the CFO of Walmart said something about this recently about that they're seeing, you know, trends at Walmart in terms of food consumption. So this is widespread. This is across all of America. It's not just New York City. It's not just Upper East Side. Is there additional pressure on Toast in a market day like this simply because of the fintech business model in general being a question mark? In other words, how much of its losses are because of weight loss and how much is just because of yields popping and this not being a very profitable company yet? It's actually a great question. So it, it, this is a long-term drag, like 24, 25. We actually see some near-term issues, right? They have trouble getting into the enterprise. We're seeing that in the numbers. Um, we've done survey on student loan debt, which shows you that 34% of people have student loan debts. And of them, 80%, almost 80% said that they're going to pare back their consumptions at restaurants. Hmm. So there's some real idiosyncratic drags on toast near term. And then the long term, you know, big deal is Ozempic, in my view. Right. And I think the point for people here is as they're looking at buying opportunities as the sell-off deepens, you're saying this is not necessarily one of them. I know there are some you do like. We'll come back to that uh, later, Dan. For now, thank you very much, Dan Dollop with Mizuho. Meantime, medical device names have also been expected to take a hit as weight loss could lead to less demand for new hips and knees in the future. And the need for insulin would also seem to go way down. But my next guest says the sell-off and insulin delivery pod maker Insulet, whose shares are down 44 percent in the past three months, is overdone, and they're upgrading the stock now. Matthew Taylor is the analyst behind this note. Matt, bring us up to speed. Welcome. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so as you said, the stock has been down over 40 percent since the select data came out. And we did analysis with physicians and survey work to show that pods long-term opportunity shouldn't be crimped much by GLP-1. I think GLP-1s can coexist with diabetes tech. The diabetes tech, whether it's CGM or pumps, are still very underpenetrated in the type 2 market. And when you think about pod and insulin pumps, most of their use historically has been in type 1, which is relatively unimpacted right. by GLP-1. So basically so, you think that for, even if overall ahead. insulin demand comes down somewhat, that the technology that they're involved with could still grow market share and therefore lead to gains? Absolutely. If you, if you want to think about it simply, the penetration in type 2 for insulin pumps is only about 5% today for intensive type 2. So even if you think GLP-1s will cut off 20% of the TAM 10 years from now, then the pro forma penetration is juiced by 20%. It's still very low. So there's a significant unmet need here still for insulin pumps, even in a GLP-1 world. And you have a $240 price target. You know, a lot of people are looking for traditionally parts of the market like healthcare that can be more defensive when things start to go belly up. But medical devices have really been in the heart of this uh, or the eye of the storm over the GLP drugs. Do you think that it's unwarranted for the entire class or just for these particular little, this particular little corner of it? Well, it's, it's probably even less warranted for the rest of the class, meaning hmm. that things like hips and knees could actually benefit from GLP ones. If you think about knee surgery, for example, there's about 10% of patients who are contraindicated for knee surgery because they're too heavy or doctors don't want to operate on them because their outcomes could be bad. True. So actually losing weight could bring more people into the funnel 
versus dropping them down the bottom of it. Now, I've heard of people who say, you know, a friend's family who had to say, no, I need to lose weight so that I can have this surgery. So your price target for Insulet is $240, which would be some pretty significant upside. Is that more than the rest of the space would have? Or, or do you think there's significant upside across the, the class here? So we, we love the group here, actually, because it's been under pressure given utilization fears and GLP-1 pressure that we think is unfounded. But our upside on pot is about 50%. I mean, that's going to be more than average for sure in our coverage. And we think that investors can take advantage of this dislocation, whether it's in pot or Dexcom's another favorite in CGM, 